Hello and welcome back to my Exploration Geology channel. I'm currently here in Levi in northern Finland, um, the heart of uh, the central Lapland greenstone belt. And I think today we should talk about um, the importance of greenstone belts uh, for the gold and the nickel copper PGE mining industry. So why are greenstone belts so important? Well, greenstone belts um, contain a large resource base of gold deposits, uh, nickel copper PGE deposits and also um, lithium pegmatites. That's why um, from an economic perspective it is important to study them in detail. Um, you find greenstone belts usually in uh, Archean and Paleoproterozoic um, terrains, so that's all Precambrian, very old deposits, several billion years old and they are spread around the world in old cratonic areas such as Western Australia, uh, West Africa, in uh, Canada, so Ontario and Manitoba and um, also here in uh, Northern Finland. Uh, so talking about this uh, uh, central Lapland Greenstone belt here you can see um, in the back actually there's hardly any geological uh, exposure, everything is forested and um, covered with a thick soil and till horizon. Um, so exploration has taken place here since the 1980s, um, but even though some exploration was undertaken, not many large deposits have been outlined. In fact, there's only one producing mine, um, that's a Kitile mine operated by Agnico Eagle. It's a bit um, further uh, here in the distance, you will not be able to see it in the video, but it's the only producing um, gold mine in this uh, greenstone belt at this state. However, some exploration is taking part as we speak. Um, and that is in a big, is in a big contrast to uh, the other uh, greenstone belts around the world, which have several large operating mines. Just think about the super pit in Kalgoorlie, West Australia, and a number of smaller um, uh, deposits outlined. Here in, in Lapland we've just got this um, uh, Kitlam mine and a number of smaller occurrences that have been outlined in the last 50 years but are not producing at the moment. So this means we've got a large exploration potential here. Now what is the story then with um, uh, how we find these deposits or what the, uh, the controls on those are. So orogenic gold deposits are um, uh, all, they're all structurally controlled. So you're looking at big shear zones, big thrust folds that um, uh, are able to localize um, and enable a fluid flow um, and the deposition of, uh, of gold and other metals. Now it's very interesting in the Central Upland Greenstone Belt, you've got a number of uh, typical and atypical orogenic gold signatures. Let's start off with the atypical ones. Um, what you see down here in Levy, running east-west, you've got the so-called Circa Shear Zone. In fact, it used to be a thrust fold. Um, and along this uh, bottom of this hill, that's where the, that um, zone is running, you find a number of uh, gold deposits along Strike. Um, it continues to the um, east as well. And um, these deposits are largely hosted in um, para schists and black schists. Now those create a big um, uh, redox barrier, if you like. And the atypical signature here consists of gold, of uh, copper, and a few other exotic minerals such as um, nickel, cobalt, and uranium. They are probably not economic, but they can be an interesting pathfinder mineral, uh, pathfinder um, element. Um, now, I believe this exotic signature, this atypical signature, is uh, due to the um, black schists, and we all know that black schists are almost like a trash bin for uh, metals. Um, so. This is, um, the, those are the deposits on the Circa line. However, there are even more deposits along later shear zones. And these shear zones are not trending east-west, they are trending northeast-southwest, roughly in this direction. Um, 
In this beautiful forested area, we've got at least three major shear zones, the Hanima, the Musa and the Kistala shear zones. And um, along those, we've got uh, a number of, um, of, of gold occurrences. Again, structural geology is the main control here. Um, those are of typical gold signatures, so usually got uh, gold and arsenic and tellurides. In the, at the Kittele mine, gold is largely refractory, so it's locked within uh, arsenopyrite, could produce some issues. Whilst along the circa line in the, in the uh, parachutes, you've got uh, free gold occurrences. So how do we ex uh, uh, explore for these uh, mineral deposits? Well, as you can see, uh, finding um, rocks here will be pretty difficult. Everything is swampy, covered in soils and forest. And you've got uh, the effects of glacial actions here. So you've got large boulder fields which transport erratics um, in, this, in this area. The central Lapland greenstone belt uh, has been the center of an ice divide uh, during the last glacial maximum. That means the ice slope has, was placed directly uh, um, in the Lapland greenstone belt. So um, transport distances have probably been quite minimal, so a few hundred meters, but it was uh, in a quite chaotic fashion. So what can we do to um, you know, improve this, our knowledge of, of the area? Well, first of all, the most important technique is airborne geophysics especially magnetics, it allows us to map uh, geology and the structures. Um, you can also use electromagnetics and um, especially the in-phase um, component of uh, electromagnetics is very useful to determine redox boundaries and um, that will allow you to find these, these literally these redox zones um, that uh, associated with um, uh, orogenic gold deposits and uh, mineralization. You also need to undertake um, some geochemistry to localize anomalies, base metal and gold anomalies, and usually or historically bottom of till uh, samples have been uh, obtained. Nowadays um, a few other um, geochemical techniques in the topsoil have been dried, such as ionic leach or MMI. Um, or traditional aquaregia, but uh, my opinion is that in this area with such an extensive cover you want to understand bedrock first, so I'm a, I'm a big advocate for uh, these stronger digests that allow you to map bedrock and map the different parts of um, alteration and that's not possible with weaker or selective leeches. Okay, so um, Let's uh, uh, sum this video up. Um, Queenstown belts are very important, a very important resource base for gold, um, nickel, copper, PGE, and uh, LCT pegmatite deposits. Today I've just talked about uh, orogenic gold deposits, um, and I hope you had a, a, a great insight into in how um, these Queenstown belts work and what the major controls are. Thank you very much, and if you like this video, give me a hand, uh, a thumbs up.